Welcome to the first match of the 2020 IQ season, sponsored by New Horizons Credit Union and the Mobile County School System. Hi everyone, I'm Bob Grip, your IQ quiz master. Today's match features students from Davidson, Citronelle, and the home team, Williamson. The questions you're going to hear this morning are prepared in 16 categories by educators throughout the country who are all experts in their fields. They try to make the questions equally challenging. Now, here's where the points are awarded. In a regular category, each team will receive its own question in that area. The team will then have 15 seconds and four opportunities to answer. The correct answer on the first try is worth four points. Each time an incorrect answer is given, it's worth one less point. And if a team misses it entirely, either of the other two teams up here can gain one point with a correct answer, and I'll explain some of the other scoring as we go on. Good luck, teams. The very first match of this year, first question in current events goes to Williamson. Give the name of the person selected as Entertainer of the Year. Ellen DeGeneres. Try again. Nick Cannon. Nope, Davidson. Lizzo. Yes, Lizzo is right. One point for Davidson. All right, Citronelle, give me the last name of the person selected as Business Person of the Year. Iger. Right. Very good, the head of Disney and ABC. Four points. Davidson, give the name of the persons selected as athletes of the year. The U.S. women's soccer team. That's correct, four points. Now we'll move on to American history, to our home team again. Perhaps the most popular of all the New Deal's alphabetical agencies this organization provided employment in fresh air government camps for about three million uniformed young men who did work such as reforestation, firefighting, and flood control. Give me the full name of this agency. Five seconds. Davidson. Civilian Conservation Corps. That's correct. Very good. Citronelle. The period of time immediately following FDR's first inauguration in March of 1933 saw an unprecedented amount of legislation passed. This legislation was designed to address the national emergency that was the U.S. economy. Give the name that refers to the first few months of FDR's presidency. Uh, the 100 days? That's right. Four points. <laughs> Davidson. During the 1920s, an organized birth control movement swept the nation, promoting contraceptives and establishing clinics throughout the country. It was led by a woman who lectured by writing on a chalkboard because she was forbidden to speak about those topics. Give me the last name of this woman leader. Sanger? That's right, Margaret Sanger. Points. <laughs> Biology is our topic. To Williamson. Identify the name of the semi-fluid matrix that surrounds the organelles and fills the interior of the cell. Cytoplasm. Yes, four points, right. <laughs> Citronelle. Give the name of the modified fat modules that form the foundation of a plasma membrane. They're extremely polar due to their attached phosphate chemical group. Lipids. Try again. Phospholipids. Yes, three points. <laughs> and Davidson. Identify the uncoiled and thread-like chromosomes that occur after cell division. Chromatin. Right, four points. Very good. Now we're going to change the rules a little bit. We're going to ask a question in sports, and this is our first toss-up question of the match. Now teams will, uh, if you want to, buzz in as soon as you think you're, you've heard enough of the question to know the answer. 
But if you don't get it and you only get one try, then the other teams can get in. All right, here's the question in sports. The New Orleans Pelicans have called this arena home since relocating to New Davidson. Smoothie King Center? Yes, the Smoothie King Center. Very good. <laughs> Literature is our topic. Back to a regular category. In James Thurber's short story titled The Princess and the Tin Box, identify the specific type of bird that was the only type of bird permitted to sing for the princess. Hummingbird. Try again. Mockingjay. Try again. Red Robin. Try again. Canary. Nope. Just wait for the buzzer. Davidson. Nightingale. Yes, a nightingale is correct. All right, Citronelle. In the short story titled Four Days in Dixie by Ambrose Bierce, Identify the year in which the story takes place. 1861. Try again. 1863. Try again. 1862. Try again. 1860. Nope. Teams, wait for the buzzer. Davidson. 1864. Yes, 1864. Oh, nice. Davidson. In Edgar Allan Poe's short story titled The Purloin Letter, in search of an important stolen letter, the prefect of the Parisian police conducted a daily, thorough, room-by-room -room search in the ministerial hotel. Till the total number of months the prefect of police spent conducting the search of the hotel for the stolen letter. Three months. That's right, four points. All right, now we're going to change the question and the rules a little bit. We're going to ask a question in math. So the teams will have 60 seconds to answer the question. All three teams have a copy of every question for possible bonus points. The first question is directed to our home team, Williamson. Everyone open your yellow math envelopes, please. A bag containing 12 marbles. Four are white, two red, six blue. If a marble is not replaced in the bag after being drawn, what is the probability that the first three marbles drawn from the bag, one at a time, will be blue? Express your answer as a fraction in simplest terms. One half. Try again. One fourth. Try again. Two thirds. Try again. One more answer left. One third. Citronelle. Two fifths. Sorry. Davidson. One over 11. All right. Next question goes to Citronelle. Everybody open your red math envelopes, please. Find the value of the sum from n equals 3 to 6 of n squared plus 1. Thirty seconds left for Citronelle. We get four possible answers. Ninety. That's correct. Four points. And the next question goes to Davidson. Everyone, open your blue math envelopes. 
find the y coordinate of the vertex of the parabola represented by 2 squared minus 2y plus 8x plus 7 equals 0. Give your answer as a fraction reduced to simplest terms. Thirty seconds. Ten seconds. Thirty. Try again. Four. Try again. Five. Nope. <laughs> okay, Citronelle. One half. No. Save it? No, it was negative nine over two. Oh. Get rid of math for a while, go back to a regular category. This one's Shakespeare. In Act One of Cymbeline, two gentlemen discuss the mood of the court following Imogen's unauthorized marriage. Give the name of the man to whom the first gentleman refers when he says, he that hath missed the princess is a thing too bad for bad report. Henry. Try again. William. Try again. <laughs> Citronel. Dominic. No. Davidson. Cloudton? Yes, one point. <laughs> Citronelle. In Act One of the first part of Henry VI, the messenger who reports Talbot's capture places the blame for it on a commander of the English reinforcements who fled the battle rather than join Talbot on the battlefield. Give this commander's last name. Five seconds. <laughs> Davidson. Falstaff. Yes, Sir John Falstaff. Right, one point. <laughs> Davidson. In Act One of Macbeth, the witches call their familiars. Give the name of the cat that is the familiar of the first witch. Gray Malkin. Right, four points. Topic is geography. To our home team now. The tallest peak of the Hammersley Mountain Range in the northwestern region of the state of Western Australia tops out at 4,052 feet above sea level. Give the name of this peak. Five seconds. Okay, Citronelle. McDornaff. No, Davidson. That was Mount Bruce. Citronelle. A vast body of water serves as a barrier between Africa and Australia. Give the name of this body of water. The, the Indian Ocean. That's correct. Four points. <laughs> Davidson. Found north of Papua New Guinea and south of Japan, a U.S. territory lies east of the Philippine Sea. Give the name of this island territory. The Philippines? Try again. Guam. Yes, three points. Guam is correct. <laughs> All right, we are halfway through our competition. Williamson has four points. Citronelle has 19. Davidson in the lead with 33.
New Horizons Credit Union is a proud supporter of local nonprofits, community events, and education, including sponsoring the annual New Horizons Credit Union Scholarship, available to members who are graduating high school seniors. And since 1950, New Horizons Credit Union has been there for its members through every phase of their lives, offering solutions for the real world. Visit newhcu.org to learn more about New Horizons Credit Union. Okay, chemistry is the question. State the name given to describe a discontinuous spectrum of light which only shows certain colors or specific wavelengths. Spectrum. Try again. Refraction. Try again. <laughs> Davidson. Emission spectrum? No. Citronelle? Colored light? No. Line spectrum. We needed line spectrum. Citronelle, give the name of the equation which relates a cell potential to its standard cell potential and reaction quotient. Five seconds. Davidson. Standard electrode potential. Sorry, Williamson. The Nernst equation. Give the name of the chemical formula written with its smallest whole number subscripts. Empirical. Yes, very good, four points. <laughs> or we would have accepted simplest formula as well. Art history is a topic. Back to our home team. The throne of King Tutankhamun is a work of masterly refinement covered with gold, silver, and vitreous paste. Give the number of people depicted in the center of the backrest of this gilded and painted wooden throne. Seven. Try again. Nine. Try again. Thirteen. Try again. Six. Nope. Teams, wait for the buzzer if you'd like to answer. Citronelle. Three. Sorry. Davidson. Four. What do you got in there eventually? Two. <laughs> it's two. All right, Citronelle, your question in art history. The ancient Aegean statue from Keros, titled Seated Harpist, has influenced artists in modern times because of the cleanness of its line. Identify the material used by the artist to create this statue. Marble? Yes, four points. <laughs> Davidson, this masterpiece is housed in the British Museum in London. It consists of two rectangular pieces of wood joined by trapezoidal ends. Historical figures are depicted on each panel in three rows. One panel shows peaceful activities. The other shows scenes of war. Give the name of this ancient artwork. Ur Standard. That's right. Four points. <laughs> okay, now we're going to change the rules once again. We're going to ask some questions in team choice. Before the match began, each team chose the subject it wanted to be quizzed on. There's four points, of course, for a correct answer, but if the original team doesn't get the correct answer, it's worth two points to the other teams. So, Williamson, you chose geography. Here's your question. The state of Western Australia stretches across several desert regions, from the Great Sandy Desert in the north to the Great Victoria Desert in the south. This region is incredibly arid. But between those two deserts lies a third in the center of the continent stretching into Southern, South Australia and the Northern Territory. Give me the name of this desert. One answer, please. Sandy. 
Behar. Sorry. <laughs> Citronelle. Cyan. No. Davidson. Gibson Desert. A Gibson Desert for two points. Very good. <laughs> Citronelle, you chose literature. Again, one answer, please. In the beginning of the short story titled One of the Missing by Ambrose Bierce, General Sherman's army confronted the enemy at and about Kennesaw Mountain. Name the state in which this mountain is located. Georgia? Yes. Four points. And Davidson, you chose Shakespeare. In Act One of Twelfth Night, a member of Orsino's court returns with news that he was forbidden admittance at Olivia's estate. Give the name of this courtier. Five seconds. Curio? Sorry. Williamson or Citronelle, you can buzz in at any time. Anybody know the answer? It's Valentine. Valentine is the name we needed. All right. Everybody, teams, or uh, hands on your buzzers, please, because this is a, a toss-up question in American history. Upton Sinclair's novel, The Jungle, published in 1906, described the horrible and unsanitary food production industry. Specifically, it highlighted the grossly unhygienic and dirty meat industry. In 1906, Teddy Roosevelt introduced legislation to open the industry to federal inspection regulations. Name this le legislation. Uh, Mr. Trinell. The Clean Food Act. Sorry. Williamson or Davidson, if you want to buzz in. Davidson. Meat Packing Act. Sorry. Williamson. Meat Package Act. Nope, the Meat Inspection Act. So we needed no points on the toss-up. Change categories now to physics. Back to our home team. State the name of the physical quantity that is equal to the slope of a moving object's velocity versus time graph. Five seconds. Force. Sorry. Try again. <laughs> Citronelle buzzed in early, so Davidson. Acceleration. Yes, acceleration is right. One point. <laughs> Citronelle, your question. Give the name of the natural phenomenon that is the result of moving electric charges. Electricity. Try again. Magnetism. Yes, magnetism is right. Three points. Davidson, give the name of the unitless quantity equal to the ratio of the speed of light in a vacuum to the speed of light in another medium. Five seconds. Citronelle. The refractive index. Sorry. Williamson. I needed this specific term, the index of refraction. American government's a topic. To Williamson now. Quote, the challenge, I responded, is to make and keep out communities, places where we can tolerate, even celebrate our differences while pulling together for the common good, unquote. State the last name of the justice who spoke these words when asked about America's greatest challenge. Five seconds. <laughs> Davidson. Marshall. Sorry, Citronelle. Jay. Nope, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. <laughs> Citronelle. Give the name of the act of 1940 that made it a crime for anyone to advocate violent overthrow of the government of the United States. In fact, it is still in effect today. Sedition Act. Try again. <laughs> David. 
Davidson. Smith Act. That's correct. One point for Davidson. And Davidson, this is your question. In 1789, Congress created a system of military courts to serve the special disciplinary needs of the armed forces and are not a part of the federal court system. State the two-word term for these military courts. Military tribunal. Try again. Courts martial. Yes. Three points. World history for Williamson. At the beginning of the 20th century, France and Germany desired to control a region between the two nations that had been taken from France by Germany during the Franco-Prussian War. Give the name of that contested region. England. Try again. Britain. Try again. Citronel. The Rhineland. Sorry. Davidson. Alsace Lorraine. That's right. One point. Very good. Citronel. The rapid industrialization of Russia brought with it many hardships for the factory workers, many of whom turned to the teachings of Karl Marx. Marx argued that revolution would inevitably lead to the dictatorship of the workers. Give the term he used to describe the factory workers whom he believed would eventually rule the world. The proletarian. That's right. Very good. And Davidson. The disillusionment associated with World War I also had an impact on philosophy. Some began to argue that life was essentially meaningless but that each person created meaning for himself or herself by the independent choices he or she made. Give the name of this philosophy which became popular in the years between the world wars. Existentialist. Can you spell it for me? E-X-P-E-N-S-I-S. No. Citronelle. Existentialism? Yes, existentialism is correct. That's good. Time for the last question in today's contest. It is a math toss-up, and it's worth four points. Again, there's only one answer permitted per team. All right, everybody open your white math envelopes now. Find the area of the triangle formed by the intersection of the line y equals negative 3x plus 12 with the x and y axes. Citronel. 24. That's correct. Four points. Very good. So our final score today, Williamson with four points, Citronel with 39, Davidson the winner with 49 points.